So in the last part of the tutorial, we managed to generate an XML document. So now that we can generate a document, we can actually start um, uh, creating the correct items. So um, if I if you look here, I have some different sprites, and I'm just going to create an item for each sprite. So I'm going to create a mana potion and a health potion. I'm going to create a chest armor piece and a helmet and I'm going to create a sword and the thing is like when we load our assets we are going to load them from the resource folder because that one is going to be built with when we export our game so instead of having them on prefabs and everything as we did before well then we want to start generating these on the go so that we can actually go into the resource folder and load these uh, these sprites so in the XML document it will be written that it lays under weapons slash helmet to get the helmet sprite. So we need to create that resource folder. So click on your asset folder and right click and click create and then go to folder and call it resources. And it's very important that you spell this correct because if you don't then it's not gonna work. So double click on that and then I'm gonna take my sprites here and drag them into this folder. So I have a folder called consumables with my um, sprites, uh, yeah, what is it called, the uh, potion sprites, uh, a folder called equipment with my equipment sprites. And remember, we have st we still have a highlighted and a normal. And then we have our weapons uh, highlighted and normal. One thing is important if you haven't done it, remember to set all your sprites you just imported to sprite 2d and ui else it's not going to work if you don't set the texture type correctly if it's on texture for example then it's not going to work so remember to put all your sprite as 2d and ui else you're going to get a white image on your inventory when you pick them up so we have in here sprites we already have all these uh, basically we can delete all these health and normal ones because we're not going to use them anymore um, just right click on them and delete because we're not going to have them in here anymore and we're going to do some more cleaning up if we go into prefabs actually sorry I'm getting ahead of myself let's just uh, generate the right weapons first or the right items first before we start cleaning up so I want to generate a item per um, per sprite I have means inside my inventory I'm gonna make two potions and I'm gonna make two equipments here and one weapon so let's see we have a two-hand weapon let's call it two-hand it's gonna be epic weapon and the sprite should have the right um, the, the correct um, path now so right when we load our sprites from our script we're gonna load it from inside the resource folder so we don't need to indicate that but we need to indicate where it is inside the resource folder so if I wanna make a weapon I need to say it is inside weapons slash forward slash and then we wanna say it's called sword highlight sword highlight so weapons slash sword highlight and the other one is going to be uh, sorry it's the other way around of course of course it is wrong uh, weapons slash sword normal and this is going to be um, awesome so I'm so good at figuring out names and the description is this is an awesome sword and it can stack one time it has 35 uh, intellect it has 10 agility 14 stamina 25 strength and 5 in attack speed so let's just see I just wanna clear out the um, streaming assets where is it just want to clean out the other one okay so if I was you I would just go and delete the item we already had so we can generate them anew so just delete that one so you only have item container and and this on the top save and load and I'm gonna generate that item and then I'm going to create a um, head and the category is equipment 
and it's going to be inside equipment slash helmet highlight and helmet normal so it should be equipment and equipment helmet normal and of course I mixed them up again there we go and this is gonna be a um, strong helmet or something and description this is a good helmet and the max size is gonna have two intellect five five six and attack speed doesn't matter and the quality should be uncommon so i'm going to generate that so now i have my helmet now i should have my chest piece so it's just going to be chest normal and this should be chest highlight and i'm just going to say the item type is a chest and what should we call this um, iron chest? This is a okay chest. And this could be a little different, the stats. And then I'm going to say the quality is rare. Yeah, and then I'm going to generate that chest rare equipment. And then we are going to make some consumables. And these are just common. These are consumable. And the sprites are inside consumable. Consumable slash health normal. And consumables slash health uh, highlight and if something's wrong we can always go to the document and, and change it so this is just going to be a health potion and this is going to be description uh, this is a health potion or this potion restores health and it's just going to restart 10 health we're going to add that and then we're going to have the same just call it mana normal and mana highlight and we're going to call it mana potion this potion restores mana and we're going to have 0 and 10 and let's just create this item Okay. so now we should have a lot of items inside our uh, assets folder so here you say yes let's go to our items here and as you can see we have all our items here we have our consumables here we have our weapons our weapon and our equipment here okay so everything is that it should be uh, right now so we just generated everything we needed so now we can start cleaning up so let's go to our prefabs first of all we can load the correct scene here base scene save this one to generator yeah, nice build go so we have our base scene here so right now we don't need these old ones uh, here if we go to we can delete our mana we can delete our health and we can delete um, this one over here, sword, basically. Yes, because we don't need that right now. So we can go to our prefabs here, and we can delete health, we can delete sword, and we can delete mana. So yeah, that's basically what we need right now. We can always add some more if we need it. So now we should start cleaning up inside the scripts. So the main place where we should change something should be inside our item script because there's lots of things we can move from here. So basically we can reduce the script to nothing almost. So we need a highlight sprite and a neutral sprite in here. But the quality and the type is already inside 
the new scripts we made, so we can delete those two. Uh, the max size is also inside that. Strength, health, intellect, agility is also inside the other scripts. Item name is also there, and the description is also there. Basically, we can remove the use here. And the get tooltip, well, all this code is basically going to go somewhere else. So, basically, going to take it. Let's actually just uncomment this one, comment it out. Because we can use some of it somewhere else. Ah, that was too much. Um, gonna use some of it somewhere else. So just, just comment it out like this. I think so, yeah. It sets that, which is not gonna be needed anymore because we're gonna do something else. So basically, we can remove the sets that function here. Now we're really cleaning up. Um, and yeah, get tooltip. We should basically use the tooltip from our item. So now we just removed a lot of code here, but we actually need to m add one more line of code. So we need to make a private item because this is the item that we create, right? So we're going to have an item, one of these items here we just created. We're going to have that inside our item script. So our item script goes on an object and then it has an item on it. So we're going to make an item and we're just going to call it item and we're going to be able to access it by a property. So you can either right click on it, click refactor, encapsulate field, or you can basically just create this property by yourself. So when you've done that, we're going to leave it for now, but we need to add something actually inside, uh, inside this in a few seconds. So now we have our item here. So in the get tooltip, we're basically just going to say return item that get tooltip because we're just going to use the tooltip from the item that is inside the uh, item script so if it's a an axe or a, a weapon it's going to return the weapons uh, tooltip and so on so we need to do something inside this uh, property here but I think I'm going to wait with setting this so that I can, I can show you what we are actually doing so I, instead of we're just writing a lot of code um, then I'm going to show you why we're writing it because there's going to be an error if we don't do it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, inventory manager and if we can find it, it's right here. Then we need to add something to the start function in here. Um, if we have a start function, I don't think we have it. I think we need to add it. Yeah, we need to add a start function here. So we're going to write, going to write public void start and in here we need to read the XML document because before we created our document and now when we start our game our inventory manager need to load in all the weapons inside the document so that we have them in in our item container so that we can select them at random when we uh, collide with something or when 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 we kill a monster or something so right now we need to do a deserialization. Um, we could do it as we did it before when we created it, but uh, I had some problems with that comp when I needed to load something from the streaming assets path in a built version of this game. So I'm going to do it a little different, but it's almost going to be the same because we need the type as we did before, an array of type. And we're just going to resolve this using system. And as we saw before, we can write using system up here to fix it. So then we're going to call this item types and it's going to be equal to the exact same thing as before type of equipment type of uh, weapon and type of consumables. Okay, so these are the types that we can deserialize as we did before, right? So we know that there is some equipment, there's some weapons, and there is some consumables in this document we're trying to deserialize. We're going to make an XML serializer. Right click on it, resolve, using system XML serialization. If you can't do that, you can go up here and write using system XML serialization. And we're going to call this serializer. 
equals new XML serializer and it should be type of item container and it's going to use the item types to digitalize this there we go so it's going to digitalize into an item container it's going to use these types up here that we use to serialize the document with then we're going to make a text reader right click on it click resolve and using system.io we are in a lot of different name spaces here and again if you can't do that right up here using system.io and we're going to call this text reader it's equal to new um, stream reader and we're going to say application dot streaming asset path uh, plus items.xml so we are in the asset path folder and we're going to make a forward slash items.xml to get the correct um, file inside this streaming asset folder here to access this file here yes. so here we are reading all the text out in the text file and then we're going to say item container we actually need to make one first so of course we need to make an item container up here in our field we make a, a private item container item container because uh, our item manager needs to contain all the items and we can put them on inside this item container here so we're just going to instantiate a new item container just like this so now we have an item container to put all these items in when we're looking through the document we're going to take the items out and put them inside this so we're going to say item container equals serializer the deserialize text reader and then we're going to say text reader dot close and I think we need to cast this into a item container. There we go. So it returns an object and it serializes into an item container. And then we're going to close our reader. So let's try to save this and see if we get any errors. And I made a breakpoint here. And I'm going to run it through Unity Visual Studio. OK, we have some fun mistakes here. Let's see. OK, so before we deleted a lot of things inside our um, inside our item script uh, here we deleted all the fields here and now of course the the rest of the project is a complete cleaning because it can't access those fields anymore so we need to tell it that all these fields are inside this item here on the item script so we need to access the item script point it towards the item and then get the different things we need because inside the item script here this normal item uh, file well, then we have the item type, quality sprite, highlight, and max size, and so on. And right now, everything is referring to something called, for example, max size inside the normal item script. But we need to tell them that it's actually hidden inside the item that is sitting on the item script. So let's go and do that. So current item dot item dot max size. And remember, it's with capital letters because it's properties. So that's one fix to go further. Current item dot item dot max size. And I hope you understand what we're doing. We are changing everything to access these variables here inside the item, which is sitting inside the item script here in the property here. So item dot item dot max size. Maybe we should rename it to someone else something else, but and we need to go here set stats well we don't need to set our stats anymore but we need to be alert here we need to do something here here change this code later we need to change this code later because we need to do something else than set the item i guess so we need to be aware of that um what else do we have there's another set stats also need to change this code later just 
so the member okay, I'm just gonna out comment that and here we're trying to access the type um, instead of the type we should actually access the name um, because the items are unique by their name and we don't need to save them by type because then we can differ them uh, because for example a mana potion and a health potion should go on shouldn't go on top of each other in the stacks and if we would define them by type because they're both consumable at the moment well then the, they would stack together which is no point because then you can't use the health potion if a mana potion is stacked onto it so instead of using the current item to save and load stuff we're going to use current item dot item dot um, item name because that's unique so it will stack item name because all health potions are called health potion so it will stack all the health potion on top of each other and not mana potion because that's another name current item dot item name item dot item name equals item dot item dot item name so we might want to change that name later Few all errors left. Dot. And what are we doing now? Move item. And here I also need to take the current item dot item dot name, and to be equal to current item dot item dot name, so that we won't be able to stack a mana potion on top of a health potion, for example. Because if we look at the type, as I said before, then we have found because then um, our um, mana potion and our health potion is both consumables and they're gonna go on top of each other and if we're in a situation where we need to take a health potion fast and we look in our inventory and a mana potion is on top of it then we need to use a mana potion to get down to the health potion um, and what are we doing here? it's the same current item dot type current item dot item dot item name Item dot item dot item name. There we go. Okay, so that was the main errors that we just fixed there. And what were we just doing? We were doing something inside our item inventory manager. Yeah, there it was. So we were trying to read out all the items in this script, uh, in, in the XML document. And let's just save this and we have a breakpoint here, so I'm going to run it uh, with debug mode so that I can see what's inside the item container. And let's go back into Unity if we could. There we go. And I'm going to click here. Let's see if it breaks. Should make it break. There we go. Okay, so we trigger the breakpoint and we item container. Looks good so far. Consumables has a count of two, and it has a health potion that gives 10 health and it has a mana potion that gives 10 mana and what else you have equipment we have some agility something something description it's a head and everything else in here is saved fine and in weapons we have our weapon with 5 attack speed and it has all the the other stats in the two hand and everything so it looks like we can actually load our um, document out in our item container so now we can actually start spawning them if we need to. Okay, so let's try to pick up some different equipment. So I'm thinking how we should do this. We could either make a function that generates the equipment and returns it to us, or we can basically do all of it inside the player. Um, you know what, let's just uh, put it inside the player for now. So we can basically make some functionality in here. Uh, where is it? on trigger into we had our chest and our item so we don't have an item anymore so we're just gonna say if our tag is equipment and we're gonna remove this here so we're gonna s make a random first of all we wanna figure out if we are gonna drop a um, equipment um, what is it called like some equipment piece like a chest or a helmet or if we're gonna drop a consumable or if we're going to drop a weapon so we're gonna make a random that chooses between those three categories first so I'm gonna say int random type equals unity engine 
dot random dot range not random random range but random range uh, between zero and three so this is gonna return sorry I forgot to zoom in this is gonna return a random number between one and two and the reason that I've choose a number between 1 and 2 is because 0, 1 and 2 is free. Um, so it's going to pick a number. Pick 1, 0, 1 or 3. So it's going to pick one of these uh, numbers or two of course. Um, and one of these numbers can be used to pick either um, either the, what is it called, the equipment array or the consumable array or the weapons array and you can see why if I run this game again I should still have my breakpoint there I think oh, don't I? no I don't um, let's go to print here again let's try one more time then I can show you what, what I mean why I want to uh, do a random of, of three numbers because if we look in the item container we have three different we have a consumable, we have a weapon, and we have a um, equipment. So we are gonna do a random. If it's zero, we are gonna pick consumables. If it's one, we are gonna pick an equipment to drop, and if it's two, we are gonna pick a weapon to drop, for example. So if we go back where we were, player, we have random on three, and then we are gonna make a new game object, temporary equals instantiate inventory manager dot uh, instance dot item object we're gonna make an object yeah, we can just use drop item I think shouldn't be any problems there I don't think there's anything on the drop item prefab here just a clean prefab there's an item script on it though um, let's just make a new game object create empty and call it item object make it into a prefab and then go to our uh, script we need to get into the inventory manager to add that new prefab we need because when we generate a new item we just need to generate some kind of game object so we can put something in our inventory so we're gonna go to our um, inventory manager here and we're gonna make a new public game object. Uh, where do we wanna put it here? Somewhere here, public game object. And we're gonna call this item object. And then we're gonna go back into our player and we're gonna say instance the ground item object. There we go. So we are going to instantiate a new object so that we can put something in our inventory. Okay, so now we figured out what item type we should drop. The next thing we need to figure out is what item inside that item type we should drop. Because when we run our game, we have some indexes in there. So let's try to run it here. If we look in the item container here, and let's say we roll w uh, zero, so we open consumables. And then we have an index of 0 and 1, so we need to figure out if we should drop a uh, health potion or if we should drop a mana potion. So that's the next role we're going to do in there. So in our player we are going to say uh, int random item. And then we're going to make a role. And we're actually going to make that role inside a switch case, so let's wait a little. We're going to switch on our random type first so case um, 0 if it rolls 0 then we're going to do something break case 1 break and case 2 break so this is a switch case which you haven't seen it before a switch case basically switches on this variable here so if random type is zero, it's gonna go into the code here and execute whatever is here. If it rolls one, it's gonna go in here and execute whatever is in here and so on. 
So this is basically another form of like a flow control than an if statement. So if row zero, we decided that we wanted to um, create what was it consumables or something. Um, and to create a consumable, we should just um, access that array that contains the consumable items. So we are going to say uh, what is it called temporary dot add component item script. So we're going to add an item script to our temporary um, object. So we're going in our game, we're going to instantiate this object here. And we're going to go from our code and say add component item script, like this. So we're adding an, a fresh item script out of the box so that we can access all the variables and everything that's inside the item script on it. Then we're going to access that uh, item script by saying um, item script new consumable equals temporary dot get component item script and then we're gonna calculate use this random item here to calculate which item we need or or find which item we need by saying random item equals unity engine dot random dot range and we're going to start at zero and we are going to end at inventory manager dot instance dot item container and we haven't made that public yet because we need to access the container that contains all the items so we need to jump into our inventory manager here and our item container here needs to be a property so right click on it click refactor encapsulate field and click OK so now we can access it from in there so if we go back to our player dot item contain contain that should be named contain let's go back uh, item manager contain no there we go just to have the right names instance that item container ah of course we didn't rename the property sorry about this there we go so now we should have that item container there we go and we're basically just gonna roll until the item container got consumables because it's the consumables array we're looking in dot count so no matter how many items if we have 100 consumable items well then it's gonna roll between 0 and um, and 100 so then we're not going to have any problems no matter what so if we use count instead of just writing out we know we have two like this then if we add another item then it's not going to be dynamic so we're going to use the inventory manager instance item container consumables that count so then we pick one of those items and the next thing we need to do is to say well inventory dot uh, add item and we are going to add our new consumable and when we're done with that, we're going to destroy the temporary item here. So that was one. So we can basically copy paste this one. Say if it wrote one, we would get, uh, we would want some, instead of consumable, we want a weapon. So we're going to add an item script, call this new weapon. And we're going to do random range inside our item container dot weapons and we're going to add the new weapon here and we're going to destroy the temporary object here and I just noticed I missed one thing out here because now we're just finding a random item here uh, a random number here and we're not using it for anything so we're just adding a new consumable without adding the correct item to it so basically we should say uh, new consumable dot item to set the item on it so it has all the stats because all the stats are hidden inside the item equals inventory manager dot instance dot item container dot um, consumables and then use the random item here there we go so now we are we are finding the random number by rolling between zero and the amount of items 
and then we're saying, well, we have the random number, so we're going to say the new consumable item we're making. Well, that item it should contain is from inventory manager instance container consumables, and then we're going to find the correct item. So if you roll zero, we're going to take a health potion and put into our new consumable item here. And we need to do the exact same thing down here after we have rolled, of course, with our weapon. Uh, it should just be new weapon, and we need to say I'm in container dot weapon. And then we need to do the exact same thing down here. And we need to change it to equipment here, new equipment. And here we need to roll until equipment dot count. It's very important that you remember to change these, else it's going to get some uh, errors later. And from container dot equipment. Weapons, consumables, yes. And we're going to add the new equipment to the instance. There we go. So now we are actually adding different stuff to our inventory. So let's try to save this. And let's make an object with the tag equipment. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's just copy our chest. Duplicate. And just move it all the way over here. And I'm going to remove the box collider and add it again so we get a normal size. Go. And we're just gonna we can change the color. How don't we have the materials? There we go. Just gonna make this one red. And we're gonna remove the chest script from it. Ah crap, that was the wrong one, wasn't it? Ah, okay, they're both connected to the same material, so... Remove this. If I did it like this, it's gonna do... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I have this, and I'm just gonna add a tag to it. Add tag. Um, new component. Uh, equipment. Or actually, we, we just have the item here, so let's just use that. Go back in here and change it back to item. So let's see, we have a chest and we have this one. Which one is which? This is that one. It's this one. It's funny that it shows that thing up here. There we go, now it works. Uh, If I wasn't missing so badly around right now, sorry about this. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna put the tag as item, and it's gonna have a box collider on it, which is a trigger. Um, now it should actually work. So let's see. We have our script, um, other tag equals item, and we have a item item generator out here which uh, has an item tag on it and we can collide with it so let's see what happens and the above item object inventory has not been assigned so of course I need to go to my inventory here and not not inventory what is it inventory manager of course inventory manager and see we have our item object here which is not assigned so we need to go to prefabs and get the item object and drag it all the way up here and as you can see there are lots of different missing components here so we might as well just go and clean those up so if we go to the inventory manager here and go to all the public ones here let's see what we need we need the slot icon this one we need hover we don't need the mana we don't need the health and we don't need the weapon inside the inventory manager we can delete those so let's go back and save so now it looks better because we don't have all those empty objects so let's try one more time open our inventory so ah yeah I remember I, I didn't do that yet so you can see that there are some white icons appearing 
up there and that's because we haven't set the sprite of our items yet and that's what I want to come back to now remember so if we go back in here and we go to our item script then we need to add some functionality here under the item uh, we need to set whenever we set the item th this function here is actually called from our player when we do uh, this this line of code where we say new item dot item well then we actually access this item here which means that we are not even setting the sprite at any point because the sprite that we're saving in the XML document is just the name of the sprite it's actually not the exact the actual sprite so we only have a name a string name and the string name is actually a path into our um, resource so we need to set the sprites under the set function here so whenever we go to our player here and set the item then we also set the uh, the sprites so after we've done this we say sprite highlighted equals resources dot load sprite value dot sprite highlighted so there we get the path we just added right and we can do the exact same thing with sprite uh, neutral that's right highlight and neutral there we go so here we are setting both sprites of the item that we just set because we have these two sprites and these are the one we are showing outside in our our game now I haven't saved so we can just uh, actually I cannot see that right now um, but these two sprites are not set that's why there's a white icon in our inventory so if we save now jump back into our game and we try again then you'll see now our items actually pops up in our inventory um, but we are not fixing our um, what is it called we're not setting our um, we're not setting our tooltip yet so there is nothing to show right now and there is something here the non-highlighted sprite of our helmet has a, an error on it you can see when I mouse over it shows the uh, highlighted one but it doesn't show the non-highlighted so let's see what's wrong here if we go to our um, equipment no streaming here let's find our helmet head helmet normal high light equipment let's check what the real name is uh, sprites resources just copy copy let's see what my is I'm apparently bad at spelling um, if I could find my place here uh, streaming assets It was helmet normal, of course. Yeah, I held it because I looked at highlight. For sorry, I'm getting tired. Um, no, M E T. There we go. So let's save this and let's try one more time. Let's see if the helmet there. The helmet is there now without any problems, and we can pick up all our other items as well. Let's just find the. There we go. Highlighted everything has highlight on without any problems so um, that's it for this part of the tool now we can actually pick up our items our random items and next we're going to look at how we can fix the tooltip and how we can drop items and so on because we need to fix everything so it works properly